Here's what's happening now. Temperatures finally going in the right direction, but who is under the gun for another frosty night? Paula? Hey, Ben, I am standing in what's considered the best downtown in Michigan, but you can help it become the best in the country with your vote, Karen. All right, thank you, Paula. Also ahead, airport chaos. Why customers of Spirit Airlines are so angry this afternoon, and are things going to get any better? Up first, homes evacuated, a school on lockdown, and traffic troubles right now. It's been a tough day in this Metro Detroit neighborhood. We have breaking new information on this gas leak. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. Let's start with that breaking news from Gross Point Woods, where an intersection is closed right now. Crews are still working on a gas leak that forced residents to evacuate their homes near Verner and Morningside. That intersection could be closed for another hour or two. This morning, homes were evacuated. Students were ordered to stay inside nearby Gross Point North High School. Now, the leak has been sealed. It was sealed around 1130. Residents were allowed to go home and the lockdown was lifted. Meantime, let's take a live look at that intersection. We're talking about Verner and Morningside in Gross Point Woods. Avoid that area for now. We'll keep you posted once it is reopened. And make sure to stay tuned to Local 4 and click on Detroit.com for the latest. Also, first at four, a 17-year-old girl from Chesterfield Township is on life support and her 21-year-old boyfriend is in custody. Marche Lowe was shot in the head Monday night inside her home. Her boyfriend told police someone else shot her and sped off in a silver car, but they didn't believe him. He was brought in on two outstanding warrants for credit card skimming, and now police say they are confident he was the shooter. So far, he has not been charged, but could be arraigned tomorrow. Chelsea Brock's murder trial began today with the victim's mother taking the stand. Brock disappeared from a Halloween party back in 2014. A year later, her remains were found in Ash Township with her Halloween costume torn up. Today, Brock's mother faced the court saying she knows her daughter was murdered because of the way the costume was destroyed. Would you have any um, reason to expect that she would rip uh, and completely sever the right strap of her costume? No. Would you have any reason? Pardon me? She worked too hard on it. 27 year old Daniel Clay is charged with second degree murder in connection with Brooks' death. If convicted, he faces life in prison. For the first time since she was rescued back on April 17th, a Detroit woman came face to face with the men who saved her life. Last month, Ethel Woodger, who was pregnant at the time, fell into the Detroit River near the Ambassador Bridge. Well, today, she thanked Detroit police officers Brian Gadwell and Stephen Rouser, who jumped into that freezing water to save her. And I'm, I'm so grateful and blessed to have all of you, good Samaritans and good police officers and firefighters and boat captains. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Just a few days after she was saved, Woodger gave birth to her child. She says without the officers, she doesn't think her or her baby would have survived. Lots of sunshine today, but it's not really warming up too much. Ben Bailey tracking, obviously, that chill in the air that we've been dealing with the past few days. Baby steps, Karen. We're, we're slowly getting there, and even though we don't have any 20s in the forecast tonight, there's still going to be a couple spots where we could be seeing some frost. That's going to be in our north zone, Lapeer, St. Clair, and Sanilac counties under frost advisories from midnight to 8 a.m. tonight. Current temperatures have started to peak into the 60s in a couple locations, and most of those are out to the west. 58 officially at the airport and slightly cooler on the east side. As we get into Thursday, that looks like our only chance of seeing any showers during the work week. But unfortunately, the weekend not completely dry. We'll run all that down for you in your seven-day forecast coming up. Karen? All right, thank you, Ben. Spirit Airlines fighting some bad publicity and trying to get its flights back on track after this video went viral. What a scene. Angry passengers revolt after getting caught in a battle between Spirit and its pilots union. Devin Skillian is in the newsroom to bring us up to date, and this is some pretty crazy video, Devin. It is, Karen, and we have, of course, recently have seen a lot of video of ugly things happening uh, inside and aboard airliners. Well, last night the scene was the Spirit Airlines ticket counter at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport when Spirit Airlines suddenly announced they were canceling nine flights 
and things quickly got very ugly. Uh, angry passengers became unruly, fighting among themselves, fighting then with the police who were called in to try and restore order. We look at cell phone video that recorded the chaos. There were about 500 people at all around the ticket counters. Three people, all from New York, were arrested and charged with inciting a riot. Spirit says they had to cancel flights because pilots didn't show up for work, and this is a labor issue. The pilots union is demanding a better contract. Many passengers, though, had to spend the night at the airport angry and frustrated about what they had to go through. Every single Spirit line to Cuba, to um, yeah. anywhere has been canceled or delayed. They delayed us. They delay it though, for and eight then hours. they cancel it like at the last minute, which yeah. is really upsetting because there's people, you know, sitting there with babies and stuff for like eight hours. Now, Spirit took its pilots' union to court, and today they did get a federal judge to issue an order for the pilots to stop boycotting flights as part of their labor action. NBC is reporting more than two dozen Spirit flights have been canceled today. That is actually a big improvement over what happened yesterday. Our consumer investigator, Hank Winchester, talked with a stranded Detroit traveler uh, and looks at uh, the ways that you can protect yourself from getting caught up in that kind of scene. Our coverage continues here on Local 4 News at 6. Karen, back to you. All right, what a mess. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Devin. You bet. Metro Detroiters are showing their amazing generosity today. Local nonprofits dealing with hate mail and a leaky roof. We told you about Zama and International last week. Well, Inkster Police and the FBI are investigating more than a dozen anti-Islamic hate letters that showed up last Friday. It was the same day the roof started leaking with a $75,000 repair bill. Since our story aired, donations have been pouring in up to $60,000 today. Take a look. This local downtown area is pushing to get into the national spotlight and you can help. Downtown Rochester is so alive in the competition for the title America's Best Main Street. So we sent our Paula Tutman to find out what makes this main street stand out. And Paula, there is so much to brag about in that area. So much to do, so many places to eat, live music. You can go on and on and on. You can go on and on and on. And you know what? Michigan is known for having great, wonderful, small town downtown districts, right? But this one is really rising to the top. I mean, they've done a fantastic job of keeping that small town feel while also making it very accessible. They've got brand new parking lots and you can't even tell they're there, but you don't have to fight to get into these doors. But let's push them to the very top. One of the most charming, eclectic, interesting small town downtowns, Rochester is just interesting enough to actually be on a field trip stop destination for second graders. Notice that the columns are at the top and the lower part are just normal bricks. Also, this was the place where Madonna learned how to dance. But significant enough to be a quarter finalist in a national contest for charming, wonderful downtown districts in the U.S. There's something about Rochester when you're here that it just feels like home. The contest is called America's Main Street, and it is mostly an internet popularity contest depending on click votes at this juncture. But if this city makes it to the top 10, the Rochester downtown district gets sent to a juried panel for final selection and a big prize. We're the only community in Michigan that made it to top 25. Downtown Rochester is a true mix of old and new, from iconic building fronts like Cruz and Muir to the inviting awnings of the urban merchant. We'll keep this aside and we can bring it back out on sidewalk sale. Kevin actually moved urban merchant from downtown Romeo to downtown Rochester two and a half years ago. He expanded his space by 4,000 square feet. And while his business has grown, he still feels like he's part of a hip happening, vibrant area that's held on to its small town feel. I love the feeling of the old downtown, which they still have, but they've kind of upgraded it with the businesses they've brought in, you know, just the retail, the restaurants, the activities. But yet to me, it still has that hometown family feel. People are shifting. People are thinking about where they want to live before they get a job. And part of where they want to live is to have a walkable atmosphere like a downtown. They want to be able to shop and eat and do everything right just outside their front door. There's so many like cute things in all the shops and most of them are homemade. And then the food is amazing as well. And just the, the atmosphere of a cute little downtown. You know, if you've never been to downtown Rochester, it really is worth visiting. 
And even if you can't get here, then you know what? It's worth clicking on. And that's what this is. It's clickbait right now. We're going to put a link on my Facebook page, Local for Paula Tutman. Send you to the link where you can vote. And then once they get to the top 10, they actually have a shot at this. And Karen, it is worth it. This is a wonderful little downtown area. Oh, it really is. And you've got that Paint Creek Trail just twisting through the downtown area. So you've got great things to do with the family. We are going to make sure we share that uh, posting so we can get them on the on the winning list. Thank you, Paula. Appreciate it. Yay! Yay! Thank you. All right. Still ahead, a very public protest targeting an airline CEO. See how one angry man made his point with a pie in the face. On the former host of Dance Moms, Big Trouble, this reality TV star faces a judge to find out if she is going to prison. Up first, news from around the world, including the big decision facing President Trump in Afghanistan. Will more American soldiers be moved to the front lines? Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. An 11-year-old girl reaching out to help me, Hank, all because of a big battle playing out between DTE and Comcast in her own backyard. All right, thank you, Hank. First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines all around the world this afternoon. Let's start with a major decision facing President Trump about American troops in Afghanistan. His military advisors are recommending sending several thousand U.S. soldiers back into Afghanistan. The goal? to take out a resurgent Taliban. The U.S. has scaled back operations under the Obama administration. The Washington Post reports President Trump will make up his mind before a NATO summit later this month. This is security camera video from a factory in Madrid. Take a close look because you can see firefighters rolling up to the scene of a fire, but then things are about to get much, much worse. As they jump out, oh, there's suddenly an explosion. 30 people are injured after the blast last Thursday. This is our first look at that dramatic video. After the blast, firefighters continued to evacuate the factory and fight the flames. The same factory was destroyed by a fire in 2013. Keeping up with new technology is critical to our futures, and today a big boost for a few hundred young Metro Detroiters. Somebody could be making some money off the fact that everybody got his PlayStation. About 400 young men spent the day at Wayne County Community College, part of the Man Code Conference for inner city teens. Two key lessons, buy stock and things you already buy, and learning to unlock the secrets of computer programming. We are teaching them everything from resume building to coding to website design to professional development. So super excited. We have about 400 boys from Detroit Public Schools here, um, here to learn about life skills, technology, um, and professional development. Microsoft, Microsoft was the title sponsor and plans to make this an annual event. Ben is back. The sky was beautiful today. So bright yeah. blue. Yeah, we do have some high clouds that have kind of fixed that a little, a little bit. bit. Uh, but you know what? We've gotten through the worst of the temperatures. So. That's good because yeah. those mornings were so chilly. Not yeah. good for running. No, no, no. <laughs> we will be seeing warmer numbers as we get through the week. In fact, here's where we started this morning. This is the 6 a.m. temperatures. There were spots in the 20s. Howell's at 28, Lapeer was at 28, Port Huron 28. Uh, we only felt a 37 officially at the airport and then very quickly warmed up. And right now we're in the 60s, at least in a lot of our west zone and a good chunk of the area, mid to upper 50s right now. Those high clouds are definitely out there. This is the lookout at Mount Clemens and you can see not as bright as what we were seeing earlier. Current temperature 58 at Metro and that air is still very dry, 37% relative humidity. Not much of a wind and we'll see even less of that going into tonight. So we're not going to have all the ingredients for those radiational cooling nights that we had last night. The one thing that we are going to have that we didn't have last night are the clouds. So that's going to help us keep those temperatures from getting uh, too cold. We're kind of threading the needle on some light showers. You see they're running to our north and south and we're right smack in the middle and staying dry. And that's the way I think we're going to be through the nighttime hours. Once we get into tomorrow, uh, we will see the clouds try to clear out a little bit tonight, but they're going to come back pretty quickly during the day on Wednesday and then clear out again as we get into the afternoon. So tomorrow it's just going to be a flip of what we had today. Sunshine on the tail end 
after starting out with some clouds in the morning and temperatures will be warmer on Wednesday than what we had today. Uh, by the way, this is our only chance of rain on Thursday and it's not real impressive. Maybe just a few scattered showers, especially as we go through the afternoon hours on Thursday. So tonight we're dropping down only to 42. Now there will be some of those mid 30s in our north zone and that's where that frost advisory settles in. Highs tomorrow are going to be affected by the east wind. So the further east you are, uh, the more cool we're going to see those temperatures. M Metro zone will be right in the low 60s here on the east side, maybe down to 58 in Flat Rock and a little bit more of a pronounced difference here in our south zone with those 50s hanging on here at Carlton Monroe and Luna Pier and then getting out into our west zone warming up to the mid maybe even upper 60s in parts of Lenawee County all 60s in our west zone away from the lakes generally mid to upper 60s there and in our north zone again further away from the lakes you'll see the 60s but closer to Lake Huron 52 in Lexington 56 in Port Huron so quite a little bit of a stretch in temperatures there uh, between uh, parts of our area tomorrow all 60s for highs as we get into the upcoming weekend and numbers with the exception of Thursday when we take a little bit of a bump down to look at those uh, showers starting to rise to the upper 60s by the end of the weekend, 70s by Monday and Tuesday next week. I don't think we're going to be completely dry on Saturday and Sunday. Probably a scattered shower at some point. Not a complete washout. Most of the weekend's dry, and we'll refine that as we get closer to Saturday and Sunday, Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. Still ahead, she is the reality TV star who made a living yelling at young dancers and their moms. Today, Abby Lee Miller faced a judge to find out if she is going to prison. The decision coming up. Up uh, first, a pie in the face protest, the CEO who was targeted and how he handled the incident with humor. Right now, though, we are following breaking news on Detroit's east side where police are investigating after suspicious devices were found at a home. This is happening on Gulford Street near Mack Avenue. We're told residents at the home had to be evacuated. We are going to continue to monitor this story from the air and on the ground, and we'll update you as we learn more. Trending at four, this embarrassing moment for the CEO of Qantas Airways, a pie-in-the-face protest. It happened during a business breakfast in Perth, Australia. The CEO, Alan Joyce, left the stage to clean up and was cheered by the crowd when he returned. The pie guy was taken into custody. Police haven't released any information on his motive or if he'll face charges. Joyce joked he couldn't tell what flavor the pie might have been and he really needed a good dry cleaner before leaving town. She was a big star on reality TV, known for her dance mom meltdowns. Well, now Abby Lee Miller is headed to prison. Miller was convicted of bankruptcy fraud for hiding $775,000 from creditors. She was hoping for probation, but a federal judge says she should serve a one year and one day in prison. Miller left the Dance Mom show in March. She's already been replaced by Cheryl Burke from Dancing with the Stars. Amazon and Target are doing battle over home delivery, and we all win. Amazon is lowering its free shipping minimum from $35 to $25 for non-prime members. Target is fighting back. The retailer is now testing a next-day home delivery service for things like coffee, shampoo, and laundry detergent. There is a catch, though. You need to be a Target Red Card member and place the order by 1.30 in the afternoon. Target says there will be a fee, but hasn't said how much. The program is being tested in Minneapolis right now. Are we ever going to the store again? I think we will. <laughs> <laughs> but it is kind of handy to order online, I will admit. Oh, still had a teenager. Topples talk show host Ellen DeGeneres with a new world record on Twitter. The story next, but up first, here's a look at what I'm working on for tonight at 11. He wasn't letting go. And I just felt, I felt every blood vessel in my face rupturing. A story of abuse she says she never saw coming. I wish that I would have walked away when I had the chance to. Looking back, there were signs. Now this local woman bravely shares how she escaped. As I was running out, I could hear him running after me. And survived. One in four women experience what happened to our survivor. Her story tonight at 11. Every day. Finally, first at four, a love of chicken nuggets has led to a new Twitter world record. Yeah, you may have heard about Carter Wilkerson. He's a teenager from Nevada. He asked Wendy's how many retweets that it would take to get free chicken nuggets for an entire year. So Wendy said 18 million. 
then his quest went viral. He was on The Ellen Show because he was threatening her world record for that famous Oscar tweet she sent out. Well, today he just passed Ellen's record with more than 3.4 million retweets. Wendy says it's enough to get the nuggets and will donate $100,000 to the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. Nugs for Carter. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. First at four. Inside Edition is next.